I'm going to show you why we haven't gone anywhere here in America. We tell ourselves we have, but we haven't. Let's take a look at some firsts. The first car. This is Carl Benz sitting on the first internal combustion engine. There were cars before this, but they were like steam engine car. Internal combustion engine car. This, all modern cars are traceable to this car in some fundamental design. That's Carl Benz with a daughter named Mercedes. Then you get the Mercedes. That's the first car. You don't want that car now. You want that car. Okay? That's also a Mercedes. Cars have advanced since then. You look at the first of its kind and say, isn't that quaint? Let's put it in the museum. Pinch his cheek, and then you get in that car and drive away. <laughs> the first cell phone, okay? Back then, he was hip, all right? He's getting dates that night with that cell phone. He's got that brick on his shoulder. He's like, hey, baby, I got my cell phone. This is my iPhone photograph from my computer. And obviously, it's much more. So cell phones have come a long way since then. Computers. You don't want that computer. You don't, okay? You don't even want an early PC, okay? You want, like, that computer. When technology advances, you never want the first of its kind, ever, because technology left it far behind. There's something called the Saturn V rocket, the first spaceship ever to escape Earth's gravity took us to the moon. It reached escape velocity, seven miles per second. The Saturn V rocket. People genuflect in front of this thing. There are four on display in the country. Two of them are in Huntsville, Alabama. It is huge. This is just one of the five engines. If you stood next to it, you'd be this big. It's huge. And you look at it and say, my God, how did we do that? What? How? Hey, what? It's 33 stories tall. It remains impressive to us because we haven't left low Earth orbit since then. That's the tragedy of the space program. Why were we so excited about the astronauts in its day with following their careers in Life magazine? Because every next mission was more ambitious than the previous ones. A new record was being set. They were going farther, faster, higher. You can't tell me who's in orbit right now, because we're boldly going where hundreds have gone before. <laughs> we are not yet making the next mark in space. And I lament this, because back in the 1960s, it was common to dream about tomorrow. The city of tomorrow, the home of tomorrow, the kitchen of tomorrow. If you're old enough, you remember this. Who's old enough to remember? The Raise your hand. You remember. This was common. This was common. Now, who's, who's 25 and younger? Raise your hand. Do you ever read books about tomorrow? <laughs> no, that all stopped. We're not producing the people who know how to dream about tomorrow. Those are the visionary scientists and engineers. We're breeding investment bankers who don't have these dreams. Let's look at what today actually is. What's going on in America today? When we don't value science and technology, what happens? Our levees break. There are two kinds of people in the world. When the asteroid comes, I mean this literally and metaphorically, the asteroid comes, what's your first thought? Is it, I'm going to build a shelter to survive this asteroid and stockpile food? Or is it, you know, or to like run away? <laughs> Two perfectly understandable reactions to that news. 
But that's not what I, I'd rather you thought something else. I'd rather you thought to yourself, I wonder how I can deflect it. These are two different states of mind. And only that state of mind comes about by people who have the technological training to think that way. So they talk about levees breaking and why wasn't the support for the displaced people in place? And I'm thinking, why did they break in the first place? Why weren't they rebuilt 50 years ago? Why weren't they made completely hurricane proof? These are the questions I'm asking and not enough other people are asking in this country. I live in New York City. A steam pipe bursted in the middle of the street. What country is this? Can't, have, haven't we solved the steam in the pipe problem? You'd think that's a solved problem of engineering. No, the pipes are getting old. Well, fix them. Invent something new. Invent a new way to move heat from one place to another. Bridges collapse. Last year, a year and a half ago, Minnesota. What country is this? Trains collide. How long have there been trains? Train goes that way and that way. Don't hit each other, okay? What's, what's the problem here? What country is this? Cranes collapse. Galveston is devastated. This is Hurricane Ike. I like this. There's a sign in the street, Hurricane forming in the Gulf. <laughs> okay. Thanks, I didn't know about that. I guess I'll escape now. Thanks for this information. We're running away from hurricanes. I want to stop the hurricane. There's a lot of energy in there. Let's tap the energy of a hurricane. Put it in our cars. Instead of running away from it. By using cars. <laughs> this was a bad day on Earth right here. Um, <coughs> let's deflect them instead of run away from them. I, I put this slide up once, and someone asked me, is that an actual photograph? <laughs> Pterodactyl had a digital camera at the time, <laughs> buried it, we dug it up, and we used the memory stick, it was fine. 